Good evening, everybody. It's always a pleasure and an honor to be with you. Um, as you can see, we are still in the Christmas season. We have our tree back there twinkling this time. <laughs> I thank all of you who are joining me tonight. Um, I pray that you're all well. I pray that your family is well. Um, those of you who may not be experiencing health at this time, we are praying for you. We believe that God is still a healer. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it feels like. God still heals. We just have to get to the point where we believe that he will heal us. We know that he heals, but we don't always believe he will heal us. Good evening, Ruthie. Good evening, Elaine and Peggy Mack. God bless y'all. I guess I missed somebody already. Good evening, Angela. That was the young lady we had the testimony from last week. Hi, Agnes. Hi, Robert Linton and Annie Linton. Good to have y'all joining me tonight. Okay, tonight we're going to get into, um, love you too, Elaine. <laughs> uh, tonight we're going to get into your feelings, how people feel, okay? Uh, ooh, hi, Denise. How you doing? Uh, Peggy, good evening to you, okay? Uh, Sabrina Williams, God bless you. Mary Julia, hi, sweetie. Linda Gamble, hi, Auntie. That's my auntie from Noonan, Georgia, my husband's aunt. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> okay, so God bless you all. Um, again, it's always a pleasure to be with you. I always love being with you. Bertha, hi, honey. Hi, Charles. Hope Charles is well. Okay, hope you're well. Okay. Um, if I keep calling names, we won't get through our lesson tonight. And I'm going to try to get through this whole lesson. So it may actually take a little longer than 30 minutes, uh, but I hope you can hang with me, okay? But I do have a lot to say about feelings because feelings play a large part in how we relate to God, believe it or not. There are times that we feel like praying, praying. There are times that we don't feel like praying. There are times that we feel like reading the Bible, there are times we don't feel like reading the Bible. There are some people who there are times they feel like being nice to people. And then there are times that they don't feel like being nice to people. Y'all get me? Yeah. Okay. Um, feelings play a large part in our lives and our emotions. And they play a large part in our relationship with God. Because when we don't feel like praying, we don't pray. When we don't feel like reading the Bible, we don't read the Bible. When we don't feel like going to church, we don't go to church. Come on, I know I got this right. Amen. When we don't feel like praising God, we sit on that bench and we do not praise God. Why? Because our feelings are in the way. So we're going to really deal with that tonight, okay? Uh, my topic tonight is it's the Christmas season and I'm not happy. What can I do? Okay. Uh, so many people are not happy right now. This has been a tough year, to say the least. Oh my God, it's just been an overwhelming year. It was prophesied to us in our church that this would be a very tough year. However, God would see us through, and we do see him doing that. But this is a tough year. People have lost loved ones. People have, have been sick and in the hospital. It, it, people couldn't have the weddings the way they wanted to. They couldn't have homegoing services the way they wanted to. It's just been rough for a lot of reasons. So at this season, many people are not happy right now. Okay. And, but we got, we, we got to fix this. We're going to fix this because happiness comes from inner joy. When you have joy on the inside, you're going to be happy, okay? It's not to say happiness means I'm singing and dancing all over the place and, oh, la, 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 and I feel so good. But there's an inner joy that keeps a smile on your face, okay, and helps you to press through your feelings. Whether you feel like doing something or not, you're still able to go ahead and do what you need to do and what you're supposed to do, okay? So, uh, you know, so as we approach this holiday season, we find that there's hopelessness, there's anxiety, there's anxiousness, there's even bitterness for some of the things that some of us have gone through this year, okay? So what can we do about that? Is there anything that we can do to help ourselves at this time when we're feeling unhappy? I'm here to tell you tonight, yes, there, there are things that you can do. You need to understand that God gives us a will. 
Okay, and so we have to will ourselves to do the things that we need to do to pull ourselves up out of a slump, to pull us pull ourselves up out of the dumps, as people say. Okay, so we're going to will. Okay, we're going to will ourselves to do the things that I'm going to mention tonight that you can do that will change the way you're feeling right now. Christmas should be a time of joy. Okay, joy to the world. The Lord has come. So we have to remember the real reason for Christmas. Let's just start right there, okay? The real reason for Christmas is that Christ came, Jesus came, God came in human form, okay, to give us an opportunity to, to, to well, for him to create a new covenant with man, okay, so that we can have an opportunity to have a relationship with him. That's the joy of Christmas. It's not about the tree and the lights and how many gifts did I get and how many gifts did I give. It's not about any of that. It's all about Jesus Christ has come to earth. And there is no greater joy than that because now we can have a relationship through Jesus Christ with the Father. Okay? So let's get into now what we can do to really appreciate this Christmas season. This is a very special time of the year. Christmas and Easter are two very special times of the year. So if we're not feeling it, we need to get ourselves on a different plane, okay? Get ourselves going down a different path. So let's see what we're going to do. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to remember what God has done. You might want to write these points down. Get your notebook, get your iPad, whatever it is. But the first thing you want to do when you're not feeling happy and you're not feeling Christmas, you need to remember what God has done. Why? Just I just named one thing that he did. He sent his son, Jesus Christ. Okay, but if that seemed too long ago for you and you can't really get into that, then you need to think about what he's done for you just within this year, just within last year, just within the last 10 years of your life, just within the last 50 years of your life, if you're old enough, just within the last 20 years of your life. You need to remember what God has done. I tell you that when you think about what God has done, when you remind yourself what God has done for you, Something starts moving on the inside, okay? A spirit of gratefulness starts coming forth. When you think on it hard enough, tears will begin to drip down your face. I'm telling you, because you know that you have been in situations that if God didn't rescue you, you would not have come out of. Come on, somebody. If God had stepped in, my God, if, if, if God had stepped in or sent even somebody to pray for you, and intercede for you, you would still be in that mess, or by now the enemy would have destroyed you. Come on, can you say amen? So the first thing we need to do is to remember, let our mind go back and remember what God has done. We live too much in the present, and we like to forget behind. Uh, we're not forgetting these things, okay? We're, we're not going to forget what God has done for us. God told the Israelites, Get those stones, okay? And, and tell your children what these stones mean. Because these stones will be a reminder of how I brought you out of Egypt. And you ought to tell your children for generations to come, okay? We need to start recording, writing down what God has done for us. So when we get in our stupor and we get, our, get into our slump, we'll go back and read those things that the Lord has done. You talking about bringing up hope inside of your spirit. You talk about bringing up joy inside of your spirit. When you remember what God has done, it also causes you to have faith that he'll do it again. If he did it the first time, why won't he do it again? Oh my God, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, this, this lesson is exciting me because when you get to talking about what the Lord has done, my God, no, you couldn't tell anybody within a 24-hour period everything that God has done for you. And if you haven't been writing it down throughout your life, some things you've even forgotten that God has done. But I'll tell you one thing. One thing I remember that God did for me, I'm going to share this quickly, okay? I was going through such a hard time in my life, and I was just crying and crying and crying to God all the time. This was years and years ago, okay? And the pain was so great, the pain in my heart was so great. The pain in my mind and my spirit was so great. 
And I remember God telling me that the season will come to, that, that you're going to come out of this wilderness. And then when you think back, you will remember what I've done, but the pain you will no longer feel. And I'm a witness today that God is a keeper of his word. And when I think back to that time in my life and the pain that I felt, I'm talking about mental anguish. I'm talking about emotional anguish. When I remember the tears that I shed, I can recall that situation, but there is no more pain about it. So see, when God does something for you, okay, he gives you a testimony. He gives you a story, but the pain of that situation, he takes it away. Woo, Jesus, my God, my God. So the first thing you're going to do is remember what God has done, okay? And also when you start remembering what God has done, guess what you do? You get thankful. You get grateful, okay? Okay, that's how people jump up and start shouting. Because if you think hard enough on what God has done for you, there is no way you can sit still in your seat. I'm having trouble sitting in this seat right now because my mind is just, just slightly reflecting. I can't go, go there too much because I'm trying to talk to you. But if I really go back, my, my family knows, honey, I will get happy in my soul talking about what the Lord has done for me, Okay. So let's, let's, let's go to Psalm 100. And everybody knows this. 100, Psalm 100, verse 4. It says, enter to his gates with thanksgiving. You can't even go to God unless you say thank you, okay? Because God wants to know that you are grateful for what he's done, okay? So that he can continue to bless you more. He wants to know that you're thankful, that you're not taking his goodness for granted, okay? Enter into his gates. You want to get into the presence of God? Come in saying, thank you, Lord, for what you've done for me. Thank you. Thank you for how you, you, you remembered me in my time of hurt. You remembered me in my time of crisis. You remembered me in my time of disorder. If you remember me, just, just the fact that God remembered you is enough to make you shout. Do you, you understand what I'm saying? Okay, so we're just going just, just gonna to go. If you want to get God's attention... Just say thank. Just start praising him. Just start praising from the bottom of your heart because he's been so good to you. Come on, somebody. You know when somebody does something good to you over and over again, good for you over and over again, you just you just say, oh, my God, thank you so much. Your thanks are so sincere. That's the same way we thank God, out of sincerity. And when you do that, okay, you get into his gate. Mm. what's better than knowing you into the gate? <laughs> you are into the gate. You don't have to struggle to pray when you're into the gate. When you're inside of the gate, woo, and you're in the presence of God, there's no more struggle, okay? It's just communion between you and God because God already knows what you have need of, but he wants you to come to him. He wants to know that you want to talk to him. He wants your time. He wants to be with you. And he wants to know that you want to be with him. So you want to get his attention? Just go ahead and start praising him. Start thanking him. Okay? Enter to his gates with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise. There you go. There's the word praise. Thanksgiving and praise, they're synonymous. Thanksgiving and praise, yes, you're praising him. You're thanking him. You're praising him for what he's done. All right? Give thanks to him and praise his name. Give thanks to who? Him. Okay? If somebody did something good for you, it's because the Lord touched their heart to do it for you. Come on. Let's, let's get this straight. If somebody did something kind for you, the Lord has placed you on that person's heart to do what they did for you. Just know that every good thing comes from above. Come on, somebody. Learn your Bible. Every good thing comes from above. So if someone has blessed you, the Lord himself has put it in their heart to bless you. Woo! Don't get it wrong, okay? God is the one who blesses. The Lord blesses. Man cannot bless. God blesses. And when man blesses you, God has moved on their heart to bless you. You hear what I'm saying? So it is courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise to his name. Okay? 
For the Lord is good. I just said because God's been good to you. And his love or his mercy endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. God is still going to be faithful to you. I don't care what you've done. I don't care where you've been. I don't care how low you went. Oh, God is faithful. God's love remains the same. You know why? Because God already knew the mess that you were going to do before you were ever even born. And he said, I have not come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through me might be saved. God already knows that we are subject to human in error. We're subject to human frailty. We're subject to not pray like we should. So the enemy stepped in and got an upper hand on us. God already knew all that before you were ever born that that was going to happen. Okay? But out of all of that, he's made a way of escape for you. He's made a way out for you. He's made a way for you to still enter his gate with thanksgiving and with praise. All right? Because God is faithful. You know, we use that word a lot, but we, we, we don't really get into the meaning of that word. Faithful means he will never leave you. He will never abandon you. He'll never say, well, you've just been so bad. You, you, you just, I, I don't want you in my sight. Woo! Thank God he doesn't go there with us. God is not like humans, okay? Human beings will say, well, she did this and he did that. And so I don't want to be bothering him ever again in life. That's what human beings do. God is not a man. God is not a man that he should lie. Or the son of man that he should repent. You hear what I'm telling you? And that's in numbers in the Bible. Okay? What God said is that I will be faithful. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will never, never leave you nor forsake you. Woo! That's enough to praise him for right there. That's enough to go into his gate saying, thank you, Father. Thank you that you haven't left me. Thank you that you haven't abandoned me. Thank you that you haven't turned your back on me. Thank you that you, oh my God, the thanks are endless of how you can thank God and what you can thank God for. All right, now let's go to point number two. Remember that God is still in control. I don't care. We had a lot of scriptures on that a couple of weeks ago, uh, proving that God is yet in control, even no, no matter what the COVID-19 virus is upon the earth, but God is still in control. You know how I know? Because if you go back to when the, the uh, Israelites were in Egypt, okay, and God, the Bible says, the Lord sent the locusts. The Lord sent all these things. God was in control of what was happening to the Egyptians the whole time. He was in control. I mean, I'm sure they were all back up saying, oh my, as a matter of fact, the, 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 the king said, pray to your God that, that he'll remove these things from us, that he'll remove these things from our land. All the stuff that God allowed to happen to them. Guess what? God was still in control. When the firstborn in every family died, guess what? God was still in, in control. Every firstborn of the Egyptians, but he spared the Israelites. It did the blood. He said, when I see the blood, the blood on your doorpost, <laughs> that death angel will pass over you. You hear what I'm telling you? God protect. That's another reason you need to thank him because he has been protecting you. You could have been cut off a long time ago. You could be sleeping in your grave today. I know of times that I should have been dead. I mean, I know when the devil tried to kill me two or three times, okay? I mean, I'm, I'm talking about really trying to kill me. I ain't talking about no, just some little slight something. I mean, I'm talking about try to take my life two or three times. And the Lord stretched forth his hand and preserved me. Truly, it was the goodness of the Lord. Do you hear what I'm saying? So we need to know that God is always in control. No matter what's going on, somebody can be up in your face. And God is still going to be in control, okay? There was somebody who was up in my husband's face years ago. And he came home so upset because he had just accepted the Lord and he, he couldn't fight anymore. He wasn't going to put his dukes up, okay? So he came home upset. And the Lord told me to tell him, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. That man will be dead in six months. Because the Bible says, touch not my anointed. 
do my prophet no harm. And that man put his hand on my husband's neck and tried to choke him right in a staff meeting in at the job, okay? Six months to the day. And I'm not bragging because God have mercy on his soul. Six months to the day, that man dropped dead of a massive heart attack at his desk at work. You know, God, God is faithful to his own. Touch not my Lord. The fact that you are in the land of the living, no matter if anybody has tried to hurt you, nobody, if anybody has tried to mar your name. Yeah, I've been through that too, where people have tried to tear down my name. Okay, been through all of that. But, uh, but through it all, God has still raised me higher. Through it all, God has raised you higher and higher. I don't care what they said. I don't care what they did. The Lord has still brought you out. And no, you didn't go down, but you saw yourself going up. Can I get a hallelujah from somebody on this Facebook live? Okay? So we're going to remember that God is still in control, no matter what. Okay? Now, remember... Do not allow yourself to be discouraged, okay? How do I not do that, okay? By the scripture, Joshua 1, 9. Joshua 1, 9. The first chapter and the ninth verse. Have I not commanded you, this is God talking, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Now, if God says you don't have to be afraid, why are you going to be afraid, okay? You got to ask yourself that. If God said, I don't have to be afraid, then why am I sitting up here letting myself be afraid? Oh, Jesus. Why? Why am I sitting up here? You know, every time I went to the doctor's office when I was fighting that terrible disease of cancer, and I sit in there and I feel fear coming upon me, and I had to repeat the scripture, God has not given us a spirit of fear. Because I have found that if you stay in the word of God, that will help you overcome any foul spirit that is trying to take you over. And that includes fear. That includes anxiety. God has named fear because he knows how easily we become afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. God has covered all the bases. Okay? You're either afraid or you're discouraged. Or you are afraid and discouraged. Okay? And some of us, because of this year, are afraid and discouraged. But the Lord is telling you tonight, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Why? Why, God? For the Lord, your God. Let's stop right there. The Lord, your God. He wasn't just Abraham's God. He wasn't just Isaac's God. He wasn't just Moses' God. He wasn't just David's God. He wasn't just Paul's God. He wasn't just Matthew, Mark, Luke, John's God. Okay, John the Baptist, he wasn't just their God. Guess what? Good news tonight. He is your God. Oh, he is, look, it's personal. Okay, God gets personal with you. It's you and him. He is your God. Oh, I love that. Get that through your psyche. I'm, I'm serving the living God, the creator of heaven and earth who formed all of this that we see. See, scientists go crazy sometimes. They try to say man came from ape. I didn't come from no ape. God said I, I was created in his image. In his image. You understand? I was created to be like him. You, so, listen, you're either going to believe the word of God or you're not. Okay? I made my mind, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it. I'm going to believe it. If I'm going to do this Christian walk, I've got to believe what God is saying to me, okay? So, for the Lord your God, what about him? He will, he will be with you wherever you go. Mm. Woo, you could go all the way up to Alaska. You could go wherever you want to go. God said he's going to be with you, okay? He's going to be with you. I remember when my dad was living Oh, I adored my father. Such an humble man of God. Such a powerful man of God. Such a loving man of God. Just an awesome dad. I just love my father. And my dad, I remember him telling me um, that he, he wanted to move to California to be with his parents because his parents had moved to California at that time. And my dad wanted to move. But he, he didn't know if he should. And he was just praying and praying and praying and praying about it. 
And the Lord spoke to him. And he said, if you want to go to California, you can go. He said, because wherever you go, I will be with you. <laughs> wherever you go, I will be with you. Okay? So God was giving him permission to go to California. You see, because even in California, God knew that he would be with him there in that state. God is awesome. You, you can't escape God. He's all around you. He's with you any and everywhere you go. What the Bible says, if I made my bed in heaven, he'll be there. If I made my bed in hell, he'll find me there. Oh my God, he's everywhere. Okay? And so, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So, why be afraid? Why be afraid? We're not saying be stupid and do stupid things. We're just saying you don't have to be afraid. Amen? And there's a difference. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged tonight. Don't be discouraged. The Lord your God is with you. Just believe that. Tell yourself, the Lord God Almighty is with me. Come on and say that. The Lord God Almighty is with me. Come on, say it till you believe it. Because sometimes people think, you know, you got to be good. You got to be so perfect for God to be with you. Where is that in the Bible? Where is that? Okay. If God said, keep my commandments. That's, listen. God wants you to press your way in, press your way through. He knows you're going to make mistakes, but guess what he does? He picks you back up, helps you stand on your feet and keep moving in the right direction. That's what the Lord does. That's what he does for us, okay? So don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And that was Joshua 1, 9, okay? Now, another way we're going to keep ourselves from being discouraged, okay? Something else we can do during this season of Christmas, okay, is to re re remember Isaiah 55, and verses 8 and 9. Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9, okay? Remember what God says. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. This is God speaking. This is God speaking. For my thoughts, his thoughts are not our thoughts. Neither are his ways, our ways, declares who? The Lord. Okay? So just, just go with that right there. I, I always had this expression. If, if somebody prophesied to me and I could figure out how God was going to do it, then, then what I was thinking wasn't going to be the way he was going to do it. <laughs> because his ways are not my ways. His thoughts are not my thoughts. So whatever I'm thinking, whatever I have figured it out, that's not the way God is coming. And guess what? It happened that way every time. God always came through a very unexpected way. He always did something he promised and through a very unexpected way. It was always a way that never even crossed my mind. And that confirms this scripture, okay? For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heaven is higher than the earth, and you know how the distance for that. So are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Okay. Well, how's that going to help me, Pastor Ross? You have to remember that whatever you're going through, some people working so hard over time, trying to figure it out, trying to understand it. Okay. Trying to uh, find out from God, why is it this way? Why is it that way? Why you let this happen? Why you let that happen? You cannot understand the thoughts of God. It doesn't mean that he has failed you because you cannot understand why God has allowed something does not mean that he doesn't love you. And it does not mean that he has failed you. Come on, somebody, because that's why he told us this. God told us everything we need to know. And one thing he said is right here in Isaiah. Don't try to figure him out. You understand? Because God's ways are not our ways. And his thoughts are not our thoughts. God's plan far succeeds what we could ever even imagine. We're just mere human beings. Whereas God is the great big God almighty. We can't begin to understand the plans of God. It's not until after God has done what he's going to do. That we down the road understand why he let this happen. Why he let that happen. Down the road, way down the road, when the plan of God is fulfilled, then when we look back, then we can begin to see, oh, I understand now why God allowed me to go through that. 
I understand why God allowed me to, 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 to become sick. I understand. Listen, that might sound weird to you, but I understand why God allowed me to go through that cancer experience. I understand. I didn't understand it then. Of course I was patting. And I'm like, oh my God, why you let me go through this? How can I, how can you let me go through this? You're a worship leader, blah, 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 blah. Okay. God said, look, you're going to have to trust me, sister. That's what he told me. You, can you trust me? That's all he said. Can you trust me? God was teach me how to trust him no matter what. That's why I can tell you no matter what it looks like, no matter what it seems like, no matter what it smells like, no matter what the report is, I'm telling you God is on your side. And you will not understand why you are in it, but you just have to trust God while you're in it. God is teaching you trust. He's teaching us trust. COVID-19, he's teaching us trust trust. Okay. Chaos in the white house. God is teaching us trust. We have to learn to trust him and look to him and get our eyes off of man. Get our eyes off of people thinking that they're going to solve the situations of this earth. Man can't do it. Oh, but the Christians can. If my people, we know the scripture, I'm not going through it tonight. If my people, okay, we've got to begin to look at God Trust God, see God, think on God, detach ourselves from the world, detach ourselves from things, okay? Things making us happy and get ourselves attached to God who surely will make you happy, all right? Now, I'm moving on, I'm moving on. Uh, it's already 8 o'clock, okay? Well, last two points, okay? We, no, I got into that already. Trust God, okay? And we know that scripture in Proverbs, the third chapter and the fifth verse, and sixth verse, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. I just talked about all that. In all your ways, sub submit yourself to him, and he will make your path straight. Or, or, or the King James Version says, you know, he, 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 he will lead you down the right road. Okay? In other words, when you acknowledge God, and you submit yourself to him like, God, I don't understand, but I trust you. Okay? Then when God brings you out, when, when God, as God leads you, you're going to see why you had to go down that road and it's going to be the right path for your life. Amen. Everybody doesn't go down the same path, but God will take you down the right path for your life. And then you'll be able to look back and say, I see why I had to go that way. Okay. Oh my God. I'm rushing through this. I wish I didn't have to. Alrighty. Let me go on. Let me go on. Um, yeah. Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? I done lost my place. Here I go. Okay. So, uh, let's go to Isaiah 41 and 10. Isaiah, the 41st chapter, the 10th verse. And it says, so, do not fear, for I am with you. <laughs> do not be dismayed, for I am your God. We just went through that. <laughs> just said God is your God. Why are you dismayed? I'm your God. Why are you? And, and Psalm says, why are you cast down on my soul? <laughs> Why are you disquieted within me? Why are you all quiet? Why are you not praising God? Why are you not thanking God? Why is your face hanging down? Why is your spirit low? Okay? Why? Because God is with you. Okay? For I am with you. Do not be dismayed. For I am your God. I'm not just with you, but I'm your God. That means I can do anything and everything that I please. That's what it means. Okay? God goes on to say, I will strengthen you. So many times we feel like we just, that we don't have any strength. Our strength has just been sapped out of us. With the times have been so tough. It's just like drained our strength. Well, that's when we go to God. God says, I will strengthen you. I will. I will. That's a promise. I will strengthen you and help you. The problem is we all trying to help ourselves. We calling sister so and so, prophet so and so, pastor so and so, trying to get help, but we're not going to God and saying, "God, help me." You, you hear what I'm saying? I'm not saying you shouldn't ask for prayer, but I'm saying we tend to turn to other people before we turn to God. Come on, let me get an amen on that. We've got to learn to trust God, trust God, look to God, depend on God. Come on, somebody. Because God has promised us that he will not only strengthen us, but he will, he will help us. He said, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I'm going to hold you up. Okay? You might think you're going down. And an enemy might think he's going to take you down. 
but I'm holding you up. You're not going down. You're not going down and you're not going under. Oh, my God. No, because I'm your God and I'm with you and I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to wrap this up. Finally, my brother, I'm in Philippians 4, verse 8. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. You want to get yourself out of that, that sadness around this time of the year, that sadness, because this has been a such, such a tough year? This is what God has to say. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. We have allowed ourselves to think on the news, think on everything but what God has said. Come on, somebody. God wants us to now refocus ourselves and focus only in on him. Think on, look at all these things you can think on. Things that are true. How do you know what's true? Read the Bible. The Bible will tell you what's true. Oh, one day I'm going to get into it. But there's a scripture the Bible talks about conspiracies. I ain't getting into that right now. Whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. Lovely. Whatsoever things are good, of a good report, good report, not a bad report. If there is any virtue, if there is any praise, in other words, if, if, if it's worth, if, if, there's pra if, it's pra if it has a praise testimony to it, if it's a value, think on these things. When we do what God has said, we won't have the struggles we're having. It's not to say that our lives will never have ups and downs. The Bible says, yes, when you serve him, you're going to have trials and tribulations. But guess what? You don't have to succumb to them. And people will wonder, why are you always so happy? And why are you smiling? Okay? And inside, you know what you're dealing with. But the joy of the Lord is yet emanating from you and within your heart. Okay? I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. Why? Because he trusts me. That was Isaiah 26, 3. Isaiah 26, verse 3. Because you trust God. Because you trust God, God himself will keep you. Mm, I'm going to say that again. Because you have learned to trust God. Because you have said, I'm going to trust God. Because you've made up your mind. Because you've said, I'm going to trust God no matter what. I don't care if I don't understand. I don't care if I don't see my way. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to trust God. It's a mind thing. I am going to trust God. I always tell my children, you know what? If I'm going to walk this thing, I'm going to talk this thing, I'm going to live it. Okay? It's going to be active in my life. I'm not just going to be a bunch of talk. You understand? I'm not going to be somebody who's just, just saying stuff to be saying it. Quote scriptures. The drunk in the street can quote scriptures. Trust me. I know. I could give you a story about my dad with this drunk in the street that was quoting scriptures to him. Okay? That's another time. All right? But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, what God says is what will see you through. What God says is what will deliver you. What God says is what will keep the joy of the Lord in your heart. What God says is what will keep your mind in perfect peace. Think on him. Think on him. Think on him. You have to train yourself. It's not easy. You got to fight the flesh to do it. You got to train yourself to think on God all the time. That's a process. Guess what? We're working on it. COVID-19 has come. It shut a lot of things down. God has taken away all of our excuses. It's now time to dig in, dig in, and dig our way up higher into the Lord. Are you ready to pray with me? Father God, we just thank you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this lesson tonight. We thank you, oh God, for showing us how we can come out of being discouraged. We can come out of being depressed. We can come out of being sad. If we just think on you and remember that the Lord, our God, you are our God, our God, and you are with us. You, are, you will strengthen us and you will help us. And you said that you will, which means that you have to do it if we just do what you're telling us to do. I pray tonight that everyone who is under the sound of my voice 
who is listening to this teaching and to this prayer. I pray, God, that you will help them, help them find their way to you. Help them find their way through sadness, through anxiety, through fear. Because in you, there is no sadness. In you, there is no anxiety. In you, there is no fear. God, help, help them to trust you. Help them to make up their minds that if they're not going to do anything else, they're going to trust you. God, help us to remember that we're serving an almighty God, an all-powerful God. Why should we fear? Why should we be afraid? Why should we be dismayed? For you are the God of the universe, and you have all things under your control. And there is no one higher than you. There is no one greater than you. Oh, God, help us to know and understand who is on our side and who is there ready for us, just waiting for us to come to you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we want to take time to thank you. Thank you for keeping us through this year. Yes, it's been hard, but you never said our way would be easy. easy. But you said you'd keep us in peace. You said you'd strengthen us. You said you would help us. And oh God, you are doing just that. Help us, oh God, to not remember the scripture tonight, but to remember it three months from now, six months from now. For the rest of our lives, let your word be planted into our hearts, God, so that the doors that we have left open for the enemy can now be permanently shut. Help us to close those doors that we've allowed the enemy to come through with his spirit of oppression and his spirit of discouragement. Oh, Father God, you have risen us above those things through Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And so, God, we accept this great, wonderful prize that you're giving us. We accept this, 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 this awesome gift that you are giving us, God, showing us how we can live on earth but not be affected by the earth, showing us how we can dwell on earth but yet dwell in you, showing us how, oh God, things can be happening all around us, oh God, but yet you will protect us. Father, you said a thousand will fall at one side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thy dwelling. So God, that's what we've got to believe. That's what we've got to think on. We cannot allow our minds to go the way of the natural, but we must stay focused on spiritual things. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are just, and the list goes on. Whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Help us to think and meditate on those things of God and not the things of the world and what the devil is presenting to us. Father, help us to put our trust in you. Help us to lean on you and look to you no matter who is in the office, no matter what's going on in politics. Father, our trust is in you. Let the world do their thing. But all our peace and our joy is in the God of heaven, our Father, the creator of all mankind. Yes, we're going to lean on you, God, and we're going to just rest in you. We're going to let your peace cover our minds by meditating on you, meditating on what you have said. God, we praise you tonight for this lesson. We praise you for all the listeners. Keep them all under the blood of Jesus. Keep their families under the blood of Jesus. Keep them, God, with, with, with the finances coming in or whatever their needs are, God. You promise to supply every need. And that's another thing we're going to remember. Our God shall supply all of our need. Every last thing we need, it comes for you. But we got to keep our eyes on you. Oh, God, we thank you. We submit this prayer to you tonight under the blood of Jesus. We pray, oh God, that people will sleep tonight, peaceful sleep, sleeping, resting in what the Lord God Almighty has said. And should they wake up in the middle of the night, let them wake up recalling the word of God that has been taught tonight, that is, that is entering their ears tonight. 
Let them meditate on those things and not allow the enemy to play games with their minds. God, we just praise you tonight. We give you all the glory. You've been so good to us. If it hadn't been for you on our side, none of us would be here today. We bless you, we praise you, and we honor you. We give you all of the glory in the matchless name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Oh, God bless you. I pray you've been blessed tonight. I'm sorry I took you so long. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, it's 8.15. Uh, but, you know, I just had to get all of this done tonight. And uh, for next week, because we're so close to Christmas and the weekend between Christmas and New Year's, we will not be uh, meeting on doing it God's way. Um, so we'll have two weeks off. Okay, pray for me and my family. I will continue to pray for all of you and your families. I pray that you have a wonderful Christmas. And I pray that you have a very happy new year. And it's going to be happy as long as we stay focused in God our Savior. Okay, so again, I will not be meeting with you for the next two weeks. Okay, but I will certainly be keeping all of you in my prayers. May the peace of God rest and rule over your lives, over your mind, over your bodies. And may the love of Jesus Christ burst forth in your heart and your spirit. I love you all with the love of Jesus Christ. God bless you all.